We have a range of kinds of collaborations in the School of Geography. First of all, there are postgraduate studentships and we have um, 16 students working on collaborative projects with a range of London museums. The Geoffrey Museum of the Hope, the V&A Museum of Childhood, the Ragged School Museum, the National Maritime Museum, the British Museum, the Hunterian Museum and the Natural History Museum. Collaboration matters to us because it gives us access to the expertise of those museums and the curators in those museums who know their collections better than anyone else. Our collaborations involve the whole range of um, students and staff that we have here. We involve our undergraduate students and our master's students in, in those collaborations, particularly with the, with the Jeffrey. Because we formalised our partnership into a new research centre, a centre that's co-directed by colleagues here at Queen Mary and colleagues at the Jeffrey, the Centre for Studies of Home. And that brings together scholars interested in home both in the past and present to work together on projects that benefit both the university and the museum. Including Arts and Humanities Research Council funded projects on home and work in London since the 17th century and living with a past at home. And from our point of view, I mean working with obviously both the curatorial department but also education and engagement I and mean, it just opens up yeah. so many horizons in terms of what collaborative work can involve. And I suppose from the Jeffrey side of things it's having access to more research than we could have ever hoped for. I think when we think mm -hmm. about that we now have seven PhDs and mm -hmm. two postdoctoral researchers, mm -hmm. I mean that's mm -hmm. No, it Unimaginable for, mm -hmm. a, for a museum of our size. Mm -hmm. And it really just makes such a huge difference for the students to actually be able to come and look at the object very directly rather than just looking at it online oh, or looking yeah. at it you know, in a, in a think, book. It's actually yeah. just see the painting itself. Yeah. So to have that privileged <coughs> access, yeah, if you like, to definitely. the collection mm -hmm. where they can come and look at objects very closely, discuss them with curators. You know, for students studying geography and cultural geography in particular, to be able to see you know, how museums work, what their priorities are, what the considerations are, what goes into making an exhibition, which again goes back to some of the other activities of the centre. We have regular conferences, one of which focused on domestic methodologies uh, and also on teaching and learning about home. I know that conferences and things that we've been to together, some of which have been at the Jeffrey, have been a really good chance to work on ideas together. It allows you to think from day one about how you might disseminate your research outside of the academy. And I'm working on home work and migration in the east end of London. Um, my time period is since 1945, so I'm hoping to focus on Vietnamese communities who live or work in Hackney, Tower Hamlets or Newham. Richard Baxter is a Leverhulme Early Career Fellow and his project involves collaboration with the Jeffrey Museum too. I have a research project that is funded for three years. The overall aim is to provide a history or a biography of a high-rise estate as home. One of the issues that I have to deal with is the issue of scale. So the Aylesbury estate is an absolutely massive estate and yet an exhibition is, is very small. So there's a question of how you translate that sense of scale. So I am working with the curator, I'm working with Alex Goddard and others. And so part of the advantage of the collaboration is that I'm not just doing this on my own, I'm also doing it in conversation with the other people at the Jeffrey. We have a partnership with the V&A Museum of Childhood nearby to us here in Bethnal Green. The V&A Museum of Childhood is working on a project with Queen Mary University London. The project is entitled Child in the World and it involves three collaborative PhDs. The first one is looking at children, home and empire. The second one is looking at children, migration and diaspora. And the third project is looking at children and global citizenship. And it's undertaking all sorts of forms of research. So it's undertaking delving into our archives and our collections or history interviews, working directly with schools, secondary and primary, and also working directly with our audiences. The benefits of working on this collaboration are to start with developing a culture of academic thinking and research at the museum itself. There had been sporadic research in the past, but not a kind of collaborative effort. So this is really sort of harnessing that way of working. My PhD research linked to the Museum of Childhood 
is about migration of children to the East End of London between the years 1930 and the present day. I would say that the inspiration for this research was based on a project that we did at the museum called The World in the East End, which was where we interviewed local people about their experiences of living in the East End, and that developed into The World in the East End Gallery, which really helped the museum reflect the diversity of the local area. I think there are huge benefits of this collaboration between the university and the museum. I think it helps the academy fulfil a more a stronger social role and makes their research more relevant. We have a project with the Ragged School Museum nearby here in Mile End, which is using the Bernardo's archive to explore health, environment and the institutional care of children in late Victorian London. We've just been given this almost complete set of night and days. Mm -hmm. Dr. Bernardo set this uh, magazine up to tell his supporters what he was up to, to campaign for changes in legislation um, and to attract very rich supporters as far as he could. And I think this page would be particularly useful, this poem about how children needed to get out into the country, into the fresh air. And here, of course, there's a description of the poor child who is dying on the streets, forgotten and neglected. How this project came about was that one of our trustees met Alistair Owens uh, at a lecture and thought that he was doing very interesting work. And so she arranged a meeting with Alistair. Then we got together to design a collaborative doctoral award. This museum uh, was originally Dr. Bernardo's largest ragged school. And for 30 years, this school educated some of the poorest children in Limehouse area near here. So the benefits of the collaboration with a, an academic institution like Queen Mary is that we can collaborate with academics to do research, which is going to be enormously helpful for displays. And it'll be fantastic for us to have Oliver working on, on the material, researching the material that we need. The way I go about doing my research is to use the materials they have here at the museum, which is things like Bernardo's um, own periodical but to also work with the, the excellent staff here and use their own expertise to, uh, to help my project. Well, the reason both the Academy and Museum should work together is because it's important for us you know, as academics to understand where this research can go and how it can help within kind of public dissemination of knowledge. With the National Maritime Museum, we currently have two collaborative doctoral awards exploring various aspects of maritime history from the 18th century, again, through to more recent times. The benefits to the Academy of working with a museum are also very, very important, primarily in terms of the primary material that we hold. Um, the collections of this museum are not available anywhere else. Uh, they range across a huge uh, collection of object categories. They're archival, but they're also three-dimensional. That's not necessarily something that, that universities have at their disposal. At the moment, I'm working with a doctoral student called Ellen Jones. Ellen has a, a, a terrific research project which relates to uh, the understanding of masculinity and material culture in the context of the 18th century Royal Navy. Collaborative doctoral awards here at the museum have extended from everything uh, from anti-slavery campaigns in the 19th century uh, to cruise liners uh, to children's literature in the early 20th century. Maritime history has an enormous range of contexts and applications. Here at Queen Mary we really enjoy collaboration and we're, we're eager to foster new partnerships with others who want to come and work with us. So perhaps if you're working in a museum and you have an idea for a project, come and talk to us and we'll explore what possibilities there are. We're eager to work with museums not only here in London, but also further afield. Perhaps you're a PhD student thinking about collaborative research. Again, come and talk to us and we'll explore possibilities and projects with you. Or maybe you're a master's student wanting to gain training in the kinds of skills that you need to undertake collaborative research. We'd really welcome you coming and meeting us.